Thank you, Ed. And thank you so much to Tommy Lee and Northern Seminary and the Growth Center for Church and Missions. Thank you for inviting me to be with you all on today. And our Hope in the Hills family here in Beverly Hills and in Hollywood and throughout Los Angeles. And actually now pretty much across the nation, <laughs> along with our 4050 family, just everyone sends their best wishes and greetings to all of you. Can we talk tonight? Can we just reason together? Um, okay, I know uh, many of you, you may just be meeting me for the first time and you heard that long litany of all the different things that we do and you're thinking, what? <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, really. And on top of that, you're like, and we started a movement of fasting and prayer and action to heal our nation's racial divide. Okay, well, listen, the bottom line underneath all of that is I am still in love with Jesus. Um, I have been loving on his bride for over a quarter of a century. And, uh, and I really do love us, the family of God. And even for probably, I was going to say just as long, but probably even longer, I have been creating these safe spaces for trust and truth to bridge our differences so that we can worship God together. So when George Floyd happened, uh, when he was murdered right after Ahmaud Arbery and Breonna Taylor and and really, you know, the summer of 2020, I sat down with God, stunned in deep grief. And I asked him a question. I asked of him, what is your answer? Like, what what is your answer? Not short term, but long term. What is your end all end all answer for how do we end once and for all the violence born of racism in our country. And I sat until I heard an answer and he gave us his plan, which was fasting and prayer. And it's fasting and prayer that leads to action, right? So that's how the 4050 Project was born, 40 days, 50 states to heal our nation's racial divide. And we jumped right in, right? So uh, praise God, I was able to quickly publish <laughs> a 40-day Bible plan on the Bible app. And uh, and then we were able to organize and we had like three levels of prayer going on. And we were able to do um, at least three or four media sessions and live lunches uh, per week, talking to different uh, experts and bringing in different voices uh, to to really pour into the community. Uh, we were able, I mean, we were just, we just jumped full throttle. We jumped in and we trusted God and the testimonies are still coming in and the movement is still moving forward. But in the midst of all of that, with all of the highs of it, with everything going on, we still hit up against an election season that was, it just felt like every day our nation was being ripped apart at the seams, right? And so as we come into this final day of an extraordinary week, remembering the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his I Have a Dream speech, what, what I really want to try to explore with you on tonight is how how can we move forward the dream that lets freedom ring right how do we move forward the dream to let freedom ring because what i faced on a daily basis in dealing with the racial inequities in our country is that it's Freedom is having a hard time coming through, right? Freedom is having a hard time ringing, you know, if, if we ought to be frank. So for the few minutes that we have together tonight, I just want to wrestle wrestle with this, this question. How do we move forward the dream to let freedom ring? Now, Dr. Dr. King, or uh, as I would like to call him on tonight, Brother Martin, uh, Brother Martin ended his famous I Have a Dream speech with that great refrain of let freedom ring. 
right? And, and you know, we, we heard him say, we want to let freedom ring from the, the mighty mountains of New York and, and let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. I love that he said, let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California, right? And then he, then he got down into the South and, and he said, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. And, and if I'm originally from Georgia, and, and if you know Stone Mountain, that really means something. If, if freedom were to ring from, from one of the birthplaces of the KKK, that, that's saying something. So, so he was painting a picture that he wanted freedom to ring from every mountain and every molehill in our country. But how do we do that? Right. And when he said that, let freedom ring, it resonated so deeply because this idea of freedom is as old as America. Right. This idea of freedom is interwoven into the very fabric of our country since since our inception from the Declaration of Independence to the American Revolution, the Statue of Liberty, the Liberty Bell, like the Emancipation Proclamation. This was all liberty, freedom freedom, liberty. But as Dr. King so aptly pointed out at the beginning of his speech, even 100 years after the Emancipation Proclamation, he says the Negro in America is still not free. And we could add on top of that, because that was almost 60 years ago, right? So we could say even 160 years after the Emancipation Proclamation, the descendants of Africans in America are still fighting to be free. Now, certainly, certainly, I know, I hear you, I hear you. Look, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you, I'm with you. Listen, I know, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. You're going to say, we've made some progress, right? Like, haven't we made some progress? Just 12 years ago, America voted her very first African-American president and President Barack Obama. We, we've made progress. And what about this week? What about this week? America made history again by by swearing in as vice president Kamala Harris, who is the first woman, the first African American, the first South Asian American, the first HBCU alum of our own illustrious uh, alma mater, Howard University. Right? Like we we made history. Right? America's made progress. And we can agree to that. Yes, Lady Liberty is on that catwalk and she is making strides, right? But if we also look at this week, we, and if we're being honest, we would have to say that the letting freedom ring part of his dream is still a working progress. Because in order to install that historical moment with, with Vice President Kamala Harris, 25,000 American troops had to protect America from Americans who wanted to overthrow the results of that election. Right? As, a, as a nation, if we're being honest, we, we, we experienced some sort of whiplash, right? It was almost like we had, we had done reverse course and we were all the way back in the 1960s, 1960 to be exact, when Ruby Bridges had to be flanked with federal troops as she became, as a six-year-old, the first little African-American to, to integrate an, an elementary school in the South, in Louisiana, right? If, if, if we were to look at this past week, it's almost as if we, we went back to 1963 when President John F. Kennedy had to federalize Alabama's National Guard so that Vivian Malone and James Hood could register to be students at the University of Alabama. See, from, from education to work to, to housing to voting, every step, every step toward achieving King's dream to let freedom ring has been met with active, violent, racial resistance. So how do we move forward the dream to let freedom ring? How do we move forward the dream to let freedom ring? Brother Martin was in his early 30s when he dreamed of letting freedom ring. And so today uh, we want to look at his leader, the person whom he followed 
and whom he modeled his life after, who was also in his early 30s when he dreamed and came into this world to actually bring that freedom. Can we just take a look? Can we look at what our Lord Jesus said? Now, we're going to look at the Old Testament, but this story was in the New Testament. And um, and it's in Luke 4 where Jesus begins his public ministry and, and he goes back home to Nazareth, goes into the synagogue on the Sabbath. And as he goes into the synagogue, they, he's given the scroll and he's given the scroll of Isaiah. And he, and it, uh, as he begins to read, he begins to read Isaiah 61. So let's look at Isaiah 61, which is our main passage for this evening. Isaiah 61. One, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings or good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, freedom to the prisoners, to proclaim the acceptable or favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. As we ask this question on tonight, and we really take a look at and, and really try to move forward this dream to let freedom ring, what, what does what does Jesus actually say when he pulls back and he pulls Isaiah into his time and, and he basically puts it down and says this, <laughs> Jesus puts the scroll down and says, this has now been fulfilled in your hearing and, and the folks lost it, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> ready to throw him off a cliff after that, right? Like the, he almost met his end. Well, not really, because he just, they say he just passed through the crowd. He just passed through the crowd. That's how our God does, right? But basically, he's talking about himself, but this passage is also applicable to us in the sense that if we're talking about freedom, right, if we're talking about the idea of freedom, and, and we're talking about this as the family of God, right, if we're talking about freedom, the very first thing that before we get to setting the captive free, before we get to freeing the prisoner, Right. And, and you know, make, giving liberty to the captive and freeing the prison before we even get to that. The very first thing that that the scripture says is the spirit of the Lord is upon me. It has to start with the spirit of God being upon us, which means we have to have a relationship with him. It's hard to understand, really understand true freedom if we have not experienced the freedom that is given in our relationship with the living God. The whole reason why Jesus even came, literally God put on flesh and came and walked among, amongst us, right? The very reason why Jesus came and he lived and he died and he rose again was so that we could have access to that eternal life with him, that we could have access to that freedom, that we could actually be set free from our sin. And the way that we enter into this relationship with him is by first repenting. It's by acknowledging that, that we have done wrong, that, that, that we confess our sin and we, and we acknowledge that we've done wrong and that we are sorry for that and that we won't do it again. This is like the missing piece when it comes to our country and moving forward in, in real freedom. Right. It's acknowledging the truth that that we as a country, that we have done wrong. It's as if it's as if you know, we we're we're so hesitant to actually repent, because if we repent, then that means that that we can be held accountable. And if we can be held accountable, that means that that we would have to probably give some sort of reparations. And we don't want to give reparations because that's a whole lot of money. <laughs> That's a whole that's a whole lot of making things right. But the other countries that have that have that have actually survived this kind of of atrocity, right? 
for other countries that have that have dealt with this South Africa, even Germany after uh, World War II with the Jews, like usually what has happened is there has been an accounting. People have said they people have confessed in South Africa once apartheid ended. People came forward and they were able to speak and 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 be across the the room or across the table from those who harmed them and they were able to say this is what happened and this is what happened and this is what happened and and there was some there was some sort of accounting for what went down if we never repent as a country if we never acknowledge that we've done wrong if we've never acknowledged that that we have that we have sinned then then we're stuck <laughs> we're absolutely stuck and so that's the very first thing. We have to be honest. It's that truth that sets free. We have to be honest and say, listen, we haven't done this right. We didn't do right. Like our country has to come back and say, we, we, did, we have not done right by the, the descendants of Africans in this country. We have, we have not done right at all. And in the same way that our God is a repairer of the breach, well, our God calls us to be repairers of the breach and he repairs breaches. He speaks of reconciliation, that true reconciliations happen, that, that a repair happens when we are willing to repent and come together, right? It means that our country has to repent and repair. And I'm not getting into all of what that looks like because I don't I don't want us to go off on a on a on a trail. But but this is a, a, a crucial piece in order for us to move forward. This is a crucial piece in order for us to actually move towards letting that freedom ring. So if we if we're going to understand how we we let freedom ring, it has to first come down to spirit of the Lord God is upon me. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. We, we want to operate in what he does and what he says. We want to operate from the inside out. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And then he goes on to say, the Lord has anointed me. Right. So not only is the spirit of the God, the spirit of the Lord upon me, we have a relationship with the Lord and we, we are communing with him and we are walking with him. We have chosen him. Right. We have we have chosen him as as our Lord and, and he, he has sent his spirit. His Holy Spirit is upon us. And then he says, the Lord has anointed me too. Right. And so what did he anoint him to do? He anointed him. It says he anointed me to heal the brokenhearted. Right. So he's anointed to heal the brokenhearted, to give liberty to the captive, to set the prisoner free. Right. So but he's anointed to do it, which means he's empowered by the Holy Spirit that's upon him to do what he's doing. So we have to we have to this. This is where the humility comes in. This is where the humility comes in. And we say, you know what? If we don't let freedom ring, God, I need you to anoint me to do it so that we are not trying to operate in our flesh, so that we're not trying to operate in our own means, so that we're not trying to do things our own way. Because how does that usually work out? <laughs> Right. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to do what? To heal the brokenhearted. Right. Oh, to preach the good news to the poor. Right. So he's preaching the good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. And to set the prisoner free. In order for us to to really understand how to 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 let freedom ring we've got to understand first how to submit to the spirit of the living god and be anointed to do what we're doing and i love it i love it because the lord the lord he says hey i come to give good news to the poor in our American society where we are infatuated with wealth and, and chasing after wealth and, and selling our souls to try to get wealth and, and, and just, you know, wearing ourselves out, trying to uh, literally allowing other people to die, trying to fulfill this, this American dream of wealth and wealth and more wealth. Jesus says, I came to give good news to the poor. 
Right. I can't. I look. He's not concerned with the stuff. So what's going on in here? And not only that, listen, I came to heal the brokenhearted. Throughout this past year, there's so many broken hearts. There's so many broken hearts, right? Right now, you might be someone, you've lost loved ones, especially during the pandemic, during the health pandemic. Your heart is broken. Jesus says, I, 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 I came for that, right? You might be one where you said, listen, I not only have I lost loved ones, I, I lost I lost I lost my career and, and I've gotten laid off and I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. And you're broken hearted. And Jesus says, I, I came for that. There may be others that, you know, you're looking at people saying how how much their relationship thrived, how how much their marriage thrived during the pandemic and being in the same house. And and there's some that are saying that we didn't even make it. We fell apart being that close together. Right? There were so many things we hadn't dealt with and it all compounded upon itself. And and now I'm broken hearted. My relationship is over. Jesus said, I, I, I came for that. Because right? by the time we get to the 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 freeing of the captive and 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 setting, you know, setting, giving liberty to the captive and setting the prisoner free. Jesus is like, I came for all of that. Right. We have been anointed people of God. We have been anointed in order the spirit of God upon us, we've been anointed to bring that freedom, to heal those broken hearts, right? To preach that good news. All of that is, is wrapped up in there together. So we're gonna let freedom ring. We, we start with the spirit of the Lord is upon me, our relationship with him, then he has anointed me. He's actually given me the power. He's given me the, 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 he's giving me his anointing, his power on the inside of me to accomplish it. So it's not just about us. It's not just about us. This is not about us climbing some ladder and showing out. This is about us doing what God has called us to do because this is very important to him. He could have said he came to do anything, but he didn't do that. He said, the spirit of Lord God is upon me to do what? To preach the good news, to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captive free. So this freedom element is so important to our God. And then he begins to give some examples, right? So he, 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 he looks up and he says, hey, I've come to proclaim the, the favorable year or the acceptable year of the Lord. And the Jewish ear, when they heard that, they would have automatically known he was talking about the year of Jubilee. And that year of Jubilee is an example of when everybody's free. If you were captive, you were set free. The land was set free. The, everything was put at rest. It was a year of Jubilee. Everything reset. So God worked it into the law that every 50 years, everything reset. Everybody went back, like everything reset. Right? And that was there was a freedom in that because if you were bound, you knew you could look forward to the time. And every seven years, all debts were set free, right? Every seven years, debt free, <laughs> canceling debts, right? And I know we talk about these different things. And, and here's, the, here's the, the, the issue too. Like when we get into this, like when we hear this, especially those of us that have come from a people who have been oppressed and, and we hear the words of our Lord and we hear these things, we go, you know what? Yes, he's talking about what happens in our soul and it's good news to the poor. He's, he's talking about our salvation and our eternal salvation, but he's also talking about our physical salvation. We hear that year of Jubilee and it tells us God cares about the fact that we, he doesn't want us to be in debt. He cares about the fact that he doesn't want us to be in prison. He, he cares about these things. He cares about our livelihood. He cares about our social being. We spent so much time this year trying to explain to, to half of the body of Christ that social issues matter, right? And I, I would say, listen, if you have if you have the privilege, because that's what it is, it's privilege. If you have the privilege of not having to talk about social issues in your sermon or in, on your churches on a Sunday or in a midweek service, if you have that privilege, it is indeed a privilege. Because what it means is that you are so sheltered away by the racial ills of America that it doesn't even touch you. <laughs> But the rest of us, we're in it. 
<laughs> and when we hear when we hear the word of the Lord say there is freedom, we are running towards it, right? We are running towards the promise of that freedom because we believe that the good news affects every part of our lives, right? The final part of this is he begins to, to, to paint a dream, if you will, right? A promise of an exchange. And I love it. And, and many, many within the body are so familiar with this, but it's, it's worth looking at because he promises to comfort those who mourn. And don't we need that? We need that right now because there's a lot of mourning and grief going on from the last year that we've had, right? With so much loss, Jesus says, hey, I, you know, he pulls, he pulls that Isaiah 61 into his, his time and we pull it into ours. And he says, listen, I comfort those who mourn, right? To give us beauty for ashes. There's this exchange, the oil of joy for mourning, right? The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that we may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. There's a change that happens where, where we no longer have to stay in the grief and the mourning, though we go through the process and that's necessary. But there's this promise that we can look forward to where he says, this is not all. This ain't it. This ain't it for you, my people. And that's the same promise that, that Brother Martin was calling us into when he when he began to just lay into this let freedom ring and and as he laid into it he he says listen there there's a there's a deeper there's a deeper promise there's a dream that that we all need to to run towards there's a dream that that is that is rooted in 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 God's word there's this dream of freedom and it is attainable it's attainable right so how 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 do we move forward this dream to let freedom ring, particularly in America and particularly around, particularly around racial issues? We just pick up this Isaiah 61 and Lord God, just pray with me. Lord God, may your spirit be upon me. Lord God, will you anoint me? Right? Will you anoint me? to preach the good news, to heal the broken hearts, to set the captive free. Will you let this be your favorable year, your year of Jubilee, where debts are removed and, and we're set free? And can we have this exchange where we're able to give, give over to you the, the heaviness and take on the garments of praise, where we're able to give over to you the ashes and, and take on the beauty, where, where we're able to, to, to really fulfill this dream that Martin even proclaimed, that we wanna let freedom ring from Hollywood all the way to New York, right? From our brothers and sisters on Broadway to those that are on Wall Street, to all of our Ivy League, you know, uh, all of our Ivy League schools, to our HBCUs, can we let freedom ring to our community colleges as well as down to our private schools and and our elementary and middle and high schools? Can we let freedom ring in our families and in our churches and in the synagogues? Can we let freedom ring? Right. And Martin just wraps it up by saying, when we, when we do that, when we let freedom ring, he says, we, we're able to speed up that day when all of God's kids, right? Doesn't matter what color we are, religion, doesn't matter which denomination, when all of God's kids are able to join hands and sing in the words of that old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty. We are free at last. Can we can we sing that today? Do you know it? Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Free at last, free at last. Thank God 
Almighty, we are free at last.